Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. In his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king! One, you husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Stop, look, listen. Here's a warning. (laughs) Nutrition authorities say breakfast should provide from one quarter to one third of the day's total food requirements. Don't let breakfast be the forgotten meal in your home. According to authorities, you can't go wrong if you eat plenty of cereal, fruit, milk or cream, bread and butter. So tomorrow, enjoy a delicious bowlful of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. For added health benefits, natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron are restored in Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Try this easy-to-serve, thrifty family breakfast tomorrow. Jim Martin had been in the Klondike community known as Big Ridge for a very short time when he had a murder on his hands. The new constable was seated at his desk when he heard the barking of a big dog. Something familiar about that. Sounds like Sergeant Preston's dog, but it can't be. It is. Hello, Jim. Well, Sergeant Preston, I'm sure glad to see you. <laughs> and you too, King. How are you, fella? You know, I heard the bark outside and I thought it sounded like King, but it didn't seem possible. I was just going to open the door when you came in. We were passing through Big Ridge. Thought we'd start and see how you're making out. Well, I'm glad you did. Sit down. Thanks. Understand you have a murder. Oh, yes, but there's no mystery about it. Any idea where Travis is hiding? Huh? How did you know the murderer's name was Travis? And how'd you know he'd skip town? I've been in Big Ridge longer than you think. When'd you get here? Three o'clock this morning. Well, why didn't you let a fellow know? I didn't want to interfere with your sleep. Besides, I had some other people to talk to. Uh, Say, Jim... They have a new girl at the dance hall. Dottie Taylor? Yes. Did she and Travis have a row of some kind? Not that I know of. Why? She told me where Travis was hiding. She did? I'm wondering if the Taylor girl told me the truth. Said she wants Travis brought back so he'll be cleared of the charges against him. Cleared of the charges? Why, it's an open and shut case against him. And we have practically an eyewitness. Yes, that's what I understood. Miss Taylor acted as if she thought a great deal of Travis. Perhaps it's just the reverse. Maybe she wants him brought in so he'll be found guilty and hanged. Travis has been in hiding for several days. Dorothy Taylor knew where he was. Why didn't she tell me? If she's telling the truth. She didn't know where he was till last night. How'd she find out? That'll keep till later. Come on, Jim. Let's go get him. <laughs> Steady, King. What's the matter, big fellow? Hmm? He heard the word go, and King likes action. <laughs> Are you geared for travel? Yes, Jim. I'll be with you as soon as I get into a park. How far do we go? Will we need a sled? No, we'll not even need snowshoes. We're supposed to find Travis hiding in a cave in Whistle Canyon. Whistle Canyon was so named because of a peculiar rock formation that caused the wind to whistle as it swept through the narrow mouth. The wind was at the back of Sergeant Preston, Constable Martin, and the great dog King. I don't see any footprints in the snow. Footprints wouldn't last half an hour with the wind blowing like this. Well, that's so. Not very familiar with this region. Do you know where the cave is? Just ahead there on the left side. Oh, right over there. Yes, I see it. If Dot Taylor told the truth, we'll find a killer there. Travis didn't impress me as that kind of a rat. Greed does things to men up here. I see. Oh, wait, wait. There's Travis at the cave, and he has a rifle. Oh, yes, Get him, King! No more of that, Travis! Sergeant Preston's quick shot smashed the carbine Travis leveled at the charging dog. King made a mighty leap, striking Travis on the chest and knocking him backwards. Holding King! 
then Fang's bared, he stood on guard, threatening the gunman until Sergeant Preston reached the entrance to the cave. Come, King, I'll take over, boy. Stand guard. Take him off! Take him off! He's ready to kill me! Easy, King. What do you think you deserve after shooting the constable? Constable? No. No, I didn't shoot the constable. I... You... Who are you? Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. No, I don't believe it. You're not a Mounty. You There's can't... a uniform beneath this, Parker, and if you want more, you can ask the constable. He's on the way here. I... Why, it is a constable. He's holding his shoulder. Looks as though you winged him. Oh, thank goodness I didn't kill him. How is it, Jim? Sorry, Grace, my shoulder. Knocked me down, but I don't think it's bad. I'll help you off with your Parker. We'll have a look at the wound. Here, I have some handcuffs. King will keep an eye on Travis. Constable, I... I didn't know it was you. I thought you two were killers. Where'd you get that idea? I was told that the murderers, the ones who killed Hendricks, were coming here to get me. Hendricks? You killed Hendricks. Oh, no, I There's didn't. There's no use trying to deny it, Travis. It's an opening shut case. You killed Hendricks, and then you came here to hide. You saw Sergeant Preston and me. You thought you could knock us both off. But you didn't count on King. He was too fast for you. That's not true. I swear it isn't. Where'd you get the idea we were killers? I... I thought the constable was someone else. Oh, you did, huh? Wait a minute, Jim. Take it easy till I bandage this wound. Ooh. See what I mean, Sergeant? Travis doesn't look like a cold-blooded killer, but he is. He's as bad as it comes. No, I'm not. Sergeant Preston, I've heard a lot about you. I've heard that no one pulls any wool over your eyes. Ah, soft soap. I, I suppose everyone who's caught says he was framed, but in my case, believe me, Sergeant, it's true. Travis, I've heard very little about Hendricks' murder. Suppose you give me the story. You knew Hendricks, didn't you, Sergeant Preston? I guess everyone's heard of him. Owned a share of the general store, a share of the cafe. He owned a share of almost everything, including Travis's gold claim. That's so? Yes, Sergeant. He grub-staked McDuffie and me. McDuffie? Who's he? He and Travis were partners. We had an equal stake in the gold claim. We lived in a little cabin at the edge of town. After we'd put in eight hours or so working the claim, we'd go into town and spend some time at the cafe where Dottie... Was. At the cafe. Where Dottie Taylor worked, eh? Yes, Love her, don't you? What has that to do with it? I just wondered. Go on, Travis. Well, about ten days ago, Mac busted his arm. He had to carry it in a sling so he couldn't work on the claim. He spent most of his time in the cafe. I I guess that's what made Hendricks kind of mad. Dottie spoke of it one evening when she sat at the table with me and Mac. Of course, it's none of my business, boys, but Mr. Hendricks figures you two are letting him down. After grub-staking you to that claim, he's pretty sore about We're it. We're not letting him down, Dot. Well, Mac isn't working the claim because he has a broken arm Travis and... Travis is working it for all he's worth. That's not the way I heard it. How oh, did you hear it, Dottie? Mr. Hendricks said he went out the other day to see how things were coming. And instead of working, you were practicing with that bow of yours. <laughs> and Hendricks was mad about that. He figured you probably spent most of your time practicing with the bow and arrow. Why, well, confound his hide. He was downright interested in that Indian bow. He tried a few shots with it himself. <laughs> he, he could hardly draw the bow. It was too strong for him. Yes, he told me about that. He said you're an expert with it, and you couldn't be so good unless you spent all of your time practicing. Dottie, the next time you see Hendricks, tell him not to worry. We're working the gold claim. We're working it plenty. You can tell him yourself. He just came into the cafe. Oh, yeah. He sees us. He's coming over the table. You should have used your bow and arrow on the old skin flint when he was out at the claim, Travis. Oh, this is where the two of you spend all your time. Why aren't you out working that claim? Hold on, Hendricks. Now, I shut up. I'll do the talking. Do sit down, Mr. Hendricks. I have. What's the matter with you, Hendricks? You're mighty riled up tonight. I'm sick and tired of the way you two are stalling on the job. Stalling? Well, I like that. I financed the two of you with the understanding that half the claim was mine and the other half was divided between you two. What about it? I provided the money. You two were to do the work. Well, you're not doing it. You think I broke my arm on purpose just to get out of a little work? Uh, busted arm. Frittering away your time here with this girl. What? How can Mac work with a busted arm? And you, Travis. You can't do a day's work without a good night's sleep. You spend most of your free time here when you should be sleeping. Now, see here, Harry. No, Simon. you see here. If that claim don't start to pay off by the first of the month, you're through. Well, both of you. Through? What do you mean? That's what I said. Read our agreement. I reserve the right to cancel the agreement and take over the property, lock, stock, and barrel if you didn't strike Peter by the first of the month. What? Mac, did you know that was in the contract? No. 
I couldn't make head and a tail out of all them legal phrases. Well, that's all I had to say. Now, well, the two of you had better get to work. So, Hendricks left the cafe. Then Mac and I looked over our copy of the agreement and found that he was right. He could take over on the first of the month. We'd have had all our work for nothing. You see, Sergeant Preston, there was a strong motive for the murder of Hendricks. Go on with the story, Travis. What do you know about the murder? Well, I left the cafe and Max stayed on to talk to Dottie for a while. I went to our shack and went to sleep. I don't know how long I'd been asleep when Mac came in and roused me. I woke up with him shaking me and talking mighty excited. Wake up. Wake up, Travis. Uh, 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 you doggone fool. Uh, Why'd you do it? Uh, hey, Mac, what's the idea? What's the matter? Matter of plenty. You got to skin out of town in a hurry. Huh? Why did you go and kill Hendricks? What's that? Kill Hendricks? Travis, why'd you use that bow and arrow of all the stupid oh, things? No, no, wait a minute. Bow and arrow. And with Vic Daggett as a witness. Heck, I swear I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't kill anyone. I've been asleep here ever since I left you and Dottie at the cafe. Hey, you can trust me, Travis. There's no need to lie to me. I'll take care of Daggett. I'll pay him to keep his mouth shut. But you've got to get out of town and go into hiding. Me? Hiding? Right now. Mac, I didn't do anything. I didn't kill Hendricks. Oh, no, no, of course. I tell I you, I did some grub and blankets all packed and ready. Go to the cave in Whistling Canyon and hide there. Hurry up now. Pull on some clothes and get moving. Even Mac, my best friend, was convinced that I'd killed Hendricks. So I could see I'd have no chance making anyone else believe that I'd been asleep at the time of the murder. Hendricks was killed by an arrow. Yes. That's right, Sergeant Preston. And it was one of Travis's arrows. It was tipped with whalebone. That's one point against Travis. Another is the fact that Travis was the only one who'd benefit by Hendrick's death. Mac would benefit as much as Travis. Yes, Sergeant. But he couldn't handle a bow and arrow, not with a broken arm. That's true. I've thought it all out while I've been here hiding. I was framed for the murder of Hendricks. And I know who framed me. You do? Yes. That's why I shot at the constable. <laughs> We'll continue our story in just a moment. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice offer these three important things you're after in a ready-to-serve breakfast cereal. One, flavor. Swell, nut-like flavor. Two, crispness. Tender, melt-in-your-mouth crispness. Three, nourishment. Restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. What's more, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are the famous cereal shot from guns. Yes, huge guns are loaded with only the premium wheat or rice grains. Then these choice kingpin kernels are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. Yes, Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. They're puffed to perfection, shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. Don't let anything hold you back. Get both delicious kinds, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. Eat the wheat one time, rice the next. It's never sold in bags or bulk, but comes only in the big Quaker red and blue package. Tomorrow, sure, try wheat or rice shot from guns for breakfast, lunch, or supper. Now to continue our story. Outside the cave at Whistle Canyon, Sergeant Preston and Constable Jim Martin were surprised when Travis said he knew who had framed him for the murder of Hendricks. That was why he had shot at and wounded the constable. Now, hold on, Travis. Do you think I framed you? No, no, don't get me wrong, Constable. Vic Daggett is the one. You and he are built about the same. When I saw you coming through the gap, I thought it was Daggett coming Who is Vic Daggett? He's a dirty, lying bully, and he's a killer. Well, that's right, Sergeant Preston. At least it's true that Daggett is a bully and generally no good. I guess it's a pretty safe bet that he came to the Yukon to get away from the law in the States. Travis, he's the man you mentioned a few minutes ago. According to your story, your friend Max said Daggett was a witness to the murder. Daggett lied. Daggett claims that he was with Hendricks when your arrow came through the windows. Striking Hendricks in the heart. He ran to the window and saw you hurrying towards your cabin carrying the bow. But that's not true, Constable. Daggard would say that. He'd say anything to make trouble for me. He's hated me ever since the time I knocked him down for molesting Dottie Taylor. 
He swore then he'd get even with me, and this is his way of doing it. You've got to believe me. Do you think I'd be stupid enough to use my own bow and arrow to shoot Hendricks? Well, I'll admit it'd be an awful stupid play, Travis. But on the other hand, a jury might figure that you were extra smart. Extra smart? Yes. Smart enough to use your own arrow for shooting Hendricks while Daggett was with him, just so as you could say you'd been framed. Oh, constable. We'd better get back to town. Uh, I suppose you'll lock me up. You'll have to be locked up on the strength of the evidence, Travis. We'll make a complete investigation and you'll get a fair trial. <laughs> Yeah, with Dagger testifying as an eyewitness. I'll have a talk with Dagger as soon as possible. If he's lying, I think I can find it out. Well, let's get going. Oh, there's just one thing, Sergeant. Yes? How did you know where to find me? Did your dog track me down? No. And someone told you where I'd been hiding? There's a girl, Travis, who had confidence in you. She wouldn't believe you were a killer. She didn't want you to remain a fugitive. She asked me to bring you back. Dottie? Yes. She wants the truth to come out because she thinks the truth will clear you. Now, come on. Let's get back to town. Yeah. Back to town. The jail. The short day had ended, and darkness had fallen by the time Travis had been locked in jail. Then Sergeant Preston and King accompanied Jim Martin home for a splendid supper cooked by the constable's good-natured housekeeper. Ah, have you had enough to eat, Sergeant? That's the best meal I've had in a long time. Yeah. Do you hear that, Mrs. O'Doyle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the thing a woman loves to hear. Faith, Sergeant, even if you're lying, I love you for it. I've met every word of it. That's the truth, Mrs. O'Doyle. <laughs> well, here's a fresh pot of coffee. I figured the two of you might be needing it before you're through with the talking. Oh. <laughs> and uh, here's a bone, Sergeant Preston, a special one for that beautiful dog. Uh, is it all right that, for me to give it to him? I'll give it to him. Thanks. Look at this, King. <laughs> Say thank you to the lady. It's not often you get a bone like this. It's welcome you are, King, and I hope you like it. Here you are, boy. Uh, Constable Jim, about that lad you locked in jail. Yes, Mrs. O'Doyle. I'm to fix a meal for him? Oh, yes, please. My, my. I can't believe that young Travers would do such a terrible thing. That I can't. I always liked the lad. Oh, when you have his supper ready, I'll take it over to him. Uh, is there any hurry about it? No, not particularly. Why? Well, now, I just put some more potatoes on to bile, and it'll take a little bit of time before they're ready. I underestimated what the two of you had ate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a sin and a shame to have a good meal spile because of no potatoes. <laughs> All right, Mrs. O'Doyle. <laughs> Jim, it's a good time for me to go and talk to Vic Daggett. I showed you where he lived. Yes. You'll probably catch him at home now. Later on, he'll be at the cafe. I'll see him at home. Want me to go with you? Oh, I'd rather go alone. The more I think about what Travis told me, the more I think Daggett's holding back the facts. You all right? <laughs> well, look at King. Sees me putting my plug on. He doesn't want to leave his bow. Torn between love and duty, eh, King? Well, you stay here, boy. I'll not need you this time. I'll be back in a little while. See you later, Jim. Right. Vic Daggett was alone in his one-room cabin. He was running a comb through his coarse black hair, preparing to go to the cafe as usual. Yeah, who in thunder could that be? Hello, Daggett. Preston. What do you want? I'll step in, if you don't mind. <clears throat> it seemed to matter whether I mind or not. In fact, I do mind. I was just fixing to go out. Sit down, Daggett. I want to talk to you. What? All right. About what? Murder. What do you mean by that? The constable told me you were with Hendricks when he was killed. That's right. Hendricks had glass windows in his house. Travis fired an arrow right through the window at Hendricks. I saw the broken window. How do you know it was Travis who fired that arrow? I ran to the window. I saw him running away. But you didn't go after him? No, I stayed with Hendricks to see if there was anything I could do for him. But, uh, but there wasn't. Laggard, on the strength of that story, I'm arresting you for murder. What? What's that? Now, see You here. lied. I did not. I Travis tell you. Travis is an experienced archer. He'd never release an arrow without a full draw, especially if he intended to kill a man. His bow has a 65-pound pull. The arrow would go directly through a man's body unless it struck a bone. I, now, now, listen. Furthermore, I, the arrow would have made a clean hole through the window like a rifle bullet. The glass in Hendricks' window was shattered. You can't say I killed Hendricks. I, I didn't do it, I tell you. I, I swear I didn't. Then you'll hang for the man who did. The coroner will testify as to the nature of the wound. Travis Bow will be demonstrated in court. The jury will visit Hendrick's house and see for itself the broken window. The jury will also see an arrow fired through another window and compare the two. No, 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 no. listen, Sergeant. Hendricks was stabbed with that arrow. It was used as a dagger. 
You frame Travis and you'll hang for it. I didn't kill him. I, t- I didn't kill Hendricks. They can't hang me for something I didn't do. Who did? Why, I... Who did? I... Let... Let go of me. Let's have it, Daggett. Let's have the truth. Talk now or I'll drag you into jail. I'll talk. I'll fuck. All right. It was Mac. Travis' partner? Yes. Yes, it, 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 it was McCarthy. He, he did it just like you said. He used the arrow as a dagger. He stabbed Hendricks with it. He he made me go with him. He made me tell that lie to help frame Travis. Oh, we're getting somewhere. I'm not going to hang for something I didn't do. I'm, I'm not going to hang for what McDuffie did. It's just like you said. He stabbed Hendricks and then smashed the window. Then hurried Travis out of town so it would appear that he was guilty. Yes, yes. With Hendricks and Travis out of the way, McDuffie would have the gold claim for himself. Come on, Daggett. I'll put you in jail and go after McDuffie. No, you won't. What? Mac. Are you yellow livered screener? Get him up, Preston. Don't go over that gun. Mac, you, you, you got here just in time. Sergeant Preston knew that it would be foolhardy to reach for his gun while McDuffie had him covered from the rear. He decided to mark time and wait in the hope that a break might come. In the meantime, Constable Jim Martin was on his way to the jail with a substantial meal prepared by Mrs. O'Doyle. King trotted at his side. Oh, you needn't look up at this and wish it was yours, King. You've got no chance of getting it. <laughs> I expect you wouldn't touch it anyway without the say-so of Sergeant Preston. Here we are. I'll put the tray down here while I get the door open. King sniffed at the enticing aroma that came from the napkin-covered tray. But the great dog had been well-trained to touch no food offered by anyone but Sergeant Preston. He drew back and looked up at the constable as Jim Martin uttered a low exclamation. Hey, there's something wrong here. The lock is busted. Travis! Travis! He's gone. All the consigned luck. King, he's got loose. The prisoner's escaped. Don't know how in time nation he busted that lock, but that's what he's done. Now, King, King, maybe you won't take orders from anyone except your master, but I'm sure hoping you'll help me follow the trail. Here, boy. Come in. Come in. Here, right on the ground. I'll be your scent here. Get that scent, King. Now, you get that scent and follow it. Lead me to Travis. You got it, King? All right, fella. Now, do just as you do if Sergeant Preston was here. Follow that trail. On your way, King. Come on, get going. In the meantime, McDuffie held his gun steady, pointed directly at Sergeant Preston, while Daggert stood by and watched. I came to pay you off, Daggert. Now you'll come in handy. You can help me swear that Travis killed this Marty. You can't get away with that one, McDuffie. Travis is in jail. No, no, he's not. I turned him loose. He's gone to the cabin to get a gun. (laughs) He thinks he's going to meet me here to get the truth out of Vic Daggett. He'll get here just in time to get the blame for shooting Preston. I'll back your story, Mac. I'll back it. We'll get Travis this time. Daggett, you fool. Don't you realize that Mac came here to kill you? He didn't know I'd be here. He's going to shoot you and let Travis take the blame. And you were going to take me to jail and get me strung up. McDuffie, you're not the first one who's pulled a gun on me. I don't think you'll be the last. Don't figure you can talk and stall until Travis gets here, Preston, because you can't. I'm letting you have it right now. Yes! Sergeant Preston ducked and charged like lightning, but he didn't duck quite far enough. McDuffie's bullet grazed his shoulder, numbing his right arm. He grabbed the killer by the knees, and the two went down. Preston's left hand closed around McDuffie's gun with a grip that was like a bear trap. Vic! Vic, pull him off so I can use the gun. I, I'm trying to. One shot, that's all I need. Hit him on the head. Grab him around the neck. Get him away from here so I can fire. Vic clawed and tore at Sergeant Preston, trying to get a grip around his throat or a chance to hit him on the head. The Monty was adept at rough and tumble fighting. He and McDuffie were on the floor, rolling and thrashing. McDuffie tried to bring the gun to bear, but Preston hung on while he did his best to keep away from Vic. I, I can't get hold of him. One shot. One shot will fix him. The odds were two against one. More than that... Preston's right arm was partially disabled from the bullet that had creased his shoulder. I'll, I'll get him in a second. Preston knew that it was merely a matter of time, a matter of seconds. The terrific strain was telling. He felt his grip grow weaker. And then he heard a shout beyond the door that Mac had left open. King! The mighty dog charged through the door. King! King! He leaped at the struggling men with the force of a battering ram. Get dog, look out! Get away! Preston released McDuffie's wrist and rolled aside. Then King's strong jaws clamped down. Yeah, All right, Jim, so have I. Down, King, I'll take over, boy. On your feet, Daggett. Right. Get your hands up. Right. You too, McDuffie. McDuffie. 
That's right, Jim. Great day. I, I expected to find Travis here. McDuffie let Travis out of jail. Told him to go home and get a gun. Travis was to be here in a few minutes. McDuffie planned to kill Vic and frame Travis for another murder. But when he found me, he decided I'd be the one to die. Listen, Sergeant, let me talk. You can talk in court. It won't do you any good. You and McDuffie will hang for Hendricks' murder. If that dog hadn't been here... These two killed Hendricks? Well, then Travis was right. He was right about Dagger, Jim. But he trusted his partner, McDuffie. He expects to come here, meet McDuffie, and force a confession out of Dagger. He'll be surprised when he learns the truth. Well, it looks to me like it's a good thing that King made a mistake. A mistake? Yes. You see, I let King walk along with me when I took supper to the jail for Travis. Well, the lock was busted... Travis was gone. I didn't stop to figure how he got out. I, I wanted to get after him before he got very far. Well, sir, King sniffed around and acted like he found a trail. So I told him to go ahead and follow it. I told him to find Travis for me. And <laughs> instead, he brought me here. It was McDuffie's trail he followed. Well, that's what I say. Ah, uh, you've got the wrong trail, King, old boy. King disagrees with that, Jim, and so do I. I'd say King picked the right trail. And because he did, we'll have good news for Travis when he gets here. We can tell him he's a free man. That this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's program. Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice are never sold in bags or bulk. No siree, Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice are never sold in bags or bulk. To get the crisp, fresh cereal shot from guns, always look for the big red and blue package. Look for the smiling Quaker man on the front. That's the only way to get the original wheat or rice shot from guns. Buy both delicious kinds tomorrow. That's Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Fred Flowerday. This story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure, The Case of Frank Weaver. When Amy Weaver told me about her missing husband, I didn't know King would trail him to a cabin where robbery and murder had been committed. The events that followed were unexpected, and I had both King and Frank to thank for saving my life. Be sure to hear this exciting story Friday. Till then, this is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.